everyone. Welcome to the class. How are you? Well, today we are going to make some exercises from the workbook. All right. So we are going to start at page 138. All right. So uh, we have two exercises in this page. All right. So it's 138, the workbook. So in the exercise number two, we have... Um, an exercise which we need to remember a certain grammar point, which is the defining relative clause, but we'll get to that later, okay? So this is exercise number two from page 138, all right? And the exercise number three, uh, which is all about vocabulary, all right? So uh, in the exercise number three, we have to use expressions and words from Unit 2, Lesson 3. Unit 2, Lesson 3 is from page, from page 28 to page 34, all right? So if you don't remember those words very well, you can go to page 28 uh, to 34. That's where Lesson 3 is from Unit 2. And then you can uh, check out this, these words, okay? So you can remember well, all right? Well, let's first talk about the exercise number two, uh, which we are going to make, uh, which is join the relative clause with its grammatical function, all right? So for that, we have to remember a little bit of the defining relative clause, all right? Um, you, I hope you guys remember this, but if you don't remember, don't worry, uh, we're going to revise this today, all right? So this grammar point, this particular grammar point of the defining relative clause is in page 29, all right? So uh, if you want to, you know, join me and we are going to check out this in page 29, all right? So this here we have the defining relative clause. What is this? Uh, we use the defining relative clause is a word that gives essential information about something, all right? So for example, we have who, whom, which is about people, all right? So who and whom, they give essential information about a person we are talking about, yes? So for example, without this defining relative clause, we can't understand the phrase, all right? So then we use who and whom to talk about people, so we can understand the phrase, all right? Then we have who and whom for people, where uh, for places, of course, to talk about places. We have which, which is for objects, all right? <clears throat> uh, uh, the which is talked about uh, objects and animals, all right? So we use the which to talk about things and animals, yeah? Then we have whose, which is used to describe possession, okay? So when we want to talk about something that belongs to someone, we use whose, okay? It's used to indicate possession, all right? And last one we have that. Uh, that, uh, they can replace the words who and which, all right? So if you don't want to use the who or the which, you can use that, all right? So these are our defining relative clauses. So they are defining because we need to use them in order um, for the phrase to make sense, all right? Uh, for, um, to have a meaning, all right? Without the defining relative clause, the phrase doesn't have any meaning, all right? So we can't understand it. So we use the defining relative clause uh, to give essential information in order for you to understand a certain phrase or a certain text, all right? <clears throat> so let's break down those defining relative clauses, all right? So we have who and whom, which is to indicate people, yeah? So to indicate a person. What is the difference between who and whom? Both are for people, yeah? So what's the difference between them? The who is used for people that do an action, okay? 
So who is a person that is doing something, all right? Whom is the opposite. It's to indicate a person that is receiving an action, okay? So who do the action, they do the action. Whom they receive the action, all right? So we have some examples here. Uh, he's the actor who earns the most money. So in this phrase, he's the actor who earns the most money. Uh, the actor, the person, the subject, uh, is doing the action of receiving the money, all right? So he's doing this action, he's earning money, okay? So he is the person that is doing this action. So we use who, all right? So he's the, uh, sorry, so he's the actor who earns uh, most money, all right? Then we have an example of whom in the book here. Uh, that is the boy whom the police are looking for. So the boy is the subject of the phrase. He is receiving the action of being uh, looked up by the police. Okay? Uh, so he is the one that's receiving this action that the police are doing to him. All right? So in Portuguese, uh, it would be ele é o ator que ganha dinheiro, ok? Que ganha mais dinheiro, então ele está fazendo essa ação de ganhar. Uh, esse é o menino que a polícia está procurando, ok? Então, esse menino está recebendo a ação de ser procurado pela polícia, ok? Então, who e whom é... Who é para quem realiza essas ações, que ganha dinheiro, que dirige o carro, etc. E whom é para pessoas que recebem a ação, a pessoa que está sendo amada, que está sendo procurada, etc, etc. Ok? So this is uh, how we use who and whom. Alright? Where is very simple, yes, to express a place, ok? Uh, to describe... Um, what happens in a location, okay? So, for example, this is the place where the crime happened, All right? So, we have um, another example here. That's the shop where I bought my cell phone. In Portuguese, it would be uh, aonde, okay? Esse foi o lugar aonde o crime foi cometido. Esse foi o lugar aonde eu comprei o meu celular. All right, so where is a defining relative clause uh, that talks about places, all right? So it's used to express places, a location, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then we have which, which is, which is used for animals and objects, all right? So we have a little example here. This is the film which I watched Yesterday, we are talking about the film. The film is an it, so we use which, all right? Uh, so, which is used for things, for ideas, for animals, for objects, all right? Everything that is not a person or a place, all right? So, this is the film which I watched yesterday. This is the computer which I bought on Christmas and etc, etc, okay? Then we have whose, which is used to express possession of something, all right? So everything that you own, everything that is a possession of yours, uh, we can use whose, okay? It's to um, talk about property, all right? So we have a whose here. Uh, it is Livia whose glasses are broken. So in this phrase, we are talking about Livia's glasses. It's her, uh, they are hers, it's her possession. So um, it's Livia's glasses, it's sorry, it's Livia whose glasses are broken. So everything that belongs to a person or to you, we can use whose, okay? It's um, an indicative of possession of property, all right? Mm -hmm. Then we have 
the last one, which is that, uh, that can replace who and which. So if you don't want to use the word who or the word which in a phrase, you can use that, all right? So for example, we have the examples in the book. Uh, this is the film which I watched yesterday. So it's uh, an object, yes, the film. Uh, we can replace which with that. So this is the film that I watched yesterday. We can replace the which to, uh, with that, yeah? Uh, and there's the same meaning. That's the same meaning, all right? So this is the movie that I watched yesterday. And who we can also replace with that. Uh, that would be... <clears throat> uh, let me see. He's the actor who earns the most money. We can replace who with that. He's the actor that earns the most money. All right? So uh, the word that can replace who and which. It can't replace anything else. Only those words, okay? Uh, only who and only which, okay? Very good. So this is the um, defining relative clauses, okay? So we got a little revision of those. So we can do the exercise number two, all right? So we are going to page 138 now, all right? Uh, and let's do the exercise number two. So join the relative clause with its grammatical function, okay? So we have here who, which, where, whom, whose, and that, okay? We have this here, the defining relative clauses, and we are going to match uh, them with their um, uses, all right? So uh, we have the defining relative clauses here, and then we have the uses here. Used to describe possession. What was it? Used instead of who or which. Which one was it? Used for people as a subject. Which one was it? Used to talk about what happens in a location. Which one was that? Used for people as the object. Which one? Used for things. And which one was that? All right, so we have to match the defining relative clauses with their meanings, with their uses. All right, so this is exercise number two. Now, exercise number three, it's all about vocabulary. So we don't have a specific grammar point that we need to see in order to do this, this exercise, all right? So you have to remember these specific vocabularies, all right? If you don't remember, no problem, okay? Uh, you can go back to page 28 and um, remember those words, okay? So the, the words from unit two, lesson three. Lesson three lasts from page 28 to 24, all right? So then we have a bunch of new contents and a bunch of vocabulary, uh, and those words are there, all right? So we have some phrases which we have to complete, all right? So number one, my brother is always getting that my mother doesn't know what, she, sorry, that my mother doesn't know what more she can do. So what is uh, the word that we learned that we could put in this blank space so it could make sense, all right? <clears throat> then we have number two, the blank space, is a person who steals from a house and runs away. So I guess you guys remember this new content, yeah? Uh, remember that we learned about people that break into other people's house and they steal a lot of things. So this is uh, the word, all right, that is missing. Then we have number three, a common crime is blank space, which happens daily in big department stores. Number four, she opened her, sorry, she opened her cupboard and the organizer saw the blank space number of shoes. Number five, what will you do blank space? Her sister asked her as she was almost finishing her degree. Number six, the little 
white space boy had stolen all the Easter eggs from the basket. Number seven, she has blank space from home and has gone to live with her uncle in the Netherlands. Number eight, she loves to watch TV series blank space uh, films. <laughs> Number nine, Alex hasn't always been a blank space person. He used to be a little reserved when he was younger. Number 10, the last one, the park has become private, so it can protect its blank space and amazing natural beauty. All right? So this is um, our exercises. This is only number one and two, okay? The number two is about defining relative clauses, which we already saw a little bit today. And the number three is all about the vocabulary we learned in lesson three, unit two, all right? So now, guys, I am going to correct those exercises. If you haven't done it, please pause the video right now, okay? So press pause in this video so you can do the exercises and then come back to the video and watch the correction, okay? I don't want you all to watch um, the correction right away. Okay, so pause the video, do the exercises, and watch the correction later, okay? Watch the correction only after you do the exercises, okay? Because, well, there is no point if you just watch the correction right away, okay? So you have to do those exercises before you watch the correction, which I'm going to do right now, all right? So please pause the video right now, okay? So, let's do the correction now, okay? So, in page 138, uh, we have exercises 2 and 3, okay? Uh, the first one, we have to match the relative clauses uh, with their meanings, okay? So, who, we already saw that is used for people as the subject, okay? So, you are going to match who with used for people as the subject, all right? So who is the person that does the action? They are the subject. We have the number two, which. Which, uh, we already saw, it's used for things. So you are going to match which with the last one, used for things, all right? Then we have the number three, where, where we saw already it's used for places, locations, all right? So you, so you are going to match where with used to talk about what happens in a location, all right? Very simple. Then we have number four, whom, okay? So we have whom here that we already saw uh, it's used when the person receives the action, when the person is the object, okay? So you're going to match whom with used for people as the object, all right? Then we have number five, which is, we, oh, sorry, which we saw that we use uh, to describe possession, okay? So whose is used to describe possession. All right, it's the first one. And the last one, number five, that. Uh, we saw that that can replace who and which, yes? So you are going to match that with used instead of who or which, okay? So that's a very simple, very easy uh, exercise, okay? So this is how it's going to look like, all right? Very good. Hmm. Then we have the exercise number three, uh, which we had to remember the vocabularies which we learned in unit two, lesson three, all right? So let's complete them. My brother is always getting blank space. The blank space was into trouble, okay? So my brother is always getting into trouble that my mother doesn't know what more she can do. To get into trouble is um, 
In Portuguese, it would be se meter em problemas. Yes? The number two, the blank space, is a person who steals from a house and runs away. Uh, it's, just, it, it's a this. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a specific kind of criminal. It's the person that enters into someone's house and they steal from them. So it's a burglar. Okay? So number two, the burglar is a person who steals from a house and runs away. Number three, a common crime is blank space, which happens daily in big department stores. So we learned also in the new content of the burglar, uh, the word shoplifting. Okay, so to shoplift is to take something from a store, from a supermarket and just walk out. So you steal something and nobody saw. So you take something, put it in your pocket, and then you walk out of the department store or the supermarket. This is called shoplifting, all right? Then we have the number four. She opened her cupboard and the organizer saw the excessive number of shoes, yes? The word excessive, you guys remember, that it's very similar to the Portuguese, yes? Excessive, it means there's too much of something. So the excessive number of shoes, uh, it, which means that there's a lot of shoes. Number five, what will you do, blank space? Her sister asked her as she was almost finishing her degree. So the blank space we should fill with afterwards, okay? So what will you do afterwards? Afterwards means after something happens, okay? So in this context here, her sister asked uh, what the girl was going to do afterwards uh, because she was almost finishing her degree, all right? Then the number six, the little blank space boy had stolen all the Easter eggs from the basket. So I found two words that can match this phrase, okay? So you can, you can use the little greedy boy had stolen all the Easter eggs or the little spoiled boy had stolen all the Easter eggs, okay? So greedy, uh, it could be translated as um, egoísta, okay? Então, o garoto egoísta roubou todos os ovos de Páscoa. Or you can also use spoiled, which in Portuguese, it means mimado, okay? Então, o menino mimado roubou todos os ovos de Páscoa, okay? So, you can use two words in here, which is greedy and spoiled, all right? Both of them are correct. The number seven, she has blank space from home and has gone to live with her uncle in the Netherlands. So, the word is she has run away from home and has gone to live with her uncle in the Netherlands. Well, to run away is to escape, okay? To escape to somewhere, to run away. Uh, number eight, she loves to watch TV series, blank space, films. So, we can um, uh, put in the blank space the words as well as films, okay? So, it's she loves to watch TV series as well as films, all right? <clears throat> Number nine, Alex hasn't always been a blank space person, but he used to be a little reserved when he was younger. The word here is chatty, okay? So, Alex hasn't always been a chatty person. Chatty, it means um, someone that likes to talk a lot, all right? So, a chatty person. Uh, in Portuguese, it would be uma pessoa falante, yes? Number 10, the park has become private, so it can protect its blank space and amazing natural beauty. So the word here, so it can protect its property and amazing natural beauty, all right? So in the number 10, the word is property. So this is... Um, our exercises for today, guys. So, we saw, uh, we did a little revision on the defining relative clauses, okay? So, which is uh, who, whom, where, which, whose, and that, all right? 
So we could do the exercise number two, and um, we saw a little bit of the vocabulary from lesson three, unit two, to complete the sentences in exercise number three, all right? So that's it for today, uh, and thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye!